Configuring Programmable Switches and LEDs In this example, we will show you how to configure a programmable button on the control surface to fire a logic output from the Blade Logic Output Port and how to use a Blade Logic Input Port to light the LED on that same programmable button. We will create two logic-only destinations for this. One of the destinations will be a logic output from the desired programmable button on the control surface. The other destination will be a logic input to illuminate the LED on the desired programmable button. For this example, we will use programmable button 3 on the control surface. Configuring the behavior of the programmable button and LED. On an E-Series or LX24 control surface, go to the VGA screen. From the Options tab, use the Available Options drop-down selector to choose Programmable Buttons. On an IP12, IP16, L8, or L12 control surface, use the GUI's button tab for this. For the Program 3 button, use its drop-down selector and choose Momentary LIO LED. Then click Apply. This is telling the button that we want it to behave in a momentary manner and that we will light the LED using external logic instead of the control surface's internal logic. Configuring the programmable button in Navigator. Select the blade that you will use for the logic output. On the Destination tab for that blade, click the Add button. This opens the Destination Signal Wizard tab. For this example, we will name the signal PBSW3. For signal type, select LIO only. Now go to the wizard's LIO Info tab. Click the Add button. This will bring up a screen called Assign an LIO Pin to PBSW3. On that screen, you will see an expandable list of the blades and their associated LIO pins and software LIOs. Expand the desired blade view by clicking the plus symbol if needed to see the available logic pins. Left click on an available pin to select it. Pin 1 is not shown because it is the ground pin that the function pins close to when activated. We will select pin 2 for this example as our function pin. For direction, choose output. Do not select the invert checkbox. For function, using the drop down selector, scroll down until you locate switch 1 and select it. Now click Apply, then Close. Then click Finish. You may have noticed that we selected Switch 1 as the function name, even though we are configuring Programmable Button 3. When choosing function names for the programmable buttons or their associated LEDs, you will always select Switch 1 or LED 1 for the LED when configuring them, regardless of which programmable button you are actually configuring. Now go to the Navigator Grid and make a connection between the source named Spare03 and the destination you created named PBSW3. You can lock this connection if you wish, there's no need for it to change. To do that, right-click on the destination and choose Lock Signal. When you press Programmable Button 3 on the control surface, you will get a closure between the logic pin 2 you selected and the ground pin on the logic connector, pin 1. You can verify that the software is configured correctly by looking on the Logic tab for the configured blade. You will see a columnated page showing the blade LIOs and their configured status. If you look in the Output column for pin 2, you will see a gray-colored virtual LED. If the software is configured correctly, this gray LED will illuminate blue when the Programmable Button 3 is pressed. Configuring the Programmable Button LED in Navigator. Select the blade you will use for the logic input for the LED. On the Destination tab for that blade, click the Add button. This opens the Destination Signal Wizard tab. For this example, we will name the signal PBLED3. For signal type, select LIO only. Now go to the wizard's LIO Info tab. Click the Add button. This will bring up a screen called Assign an LIO Pin to PBLED3. 
On that screen, you will see an expandable list of the blades and their associated LIO pins and software LIOs. Expand the desired blade view by clicking the plus symbol if needed to see the available logic pins. Left click on an available pin to select it. We will select pin 3 for this example as our function pin. For direction, choose input. Do not select the invert checkbox. For function, using the drop down selector, scroll down until you locate switch LED 1 and select it. Now click Apply, then Close. Then click Finish. You may have noticed that we selected Switch LED 1 as the function name, even though we are configuring Programmable Button LED 3. When choosing function names for the programmable buttons or their associated LEDs, you will always select Switch 1 or Switch LED 1 for the LED when configuring them, regardless of which programmable button you are actually configuring. Now go to the Navigator Grid and make a connection between the source, named Spare03, and the destination you created, named PBLED3. As we did with the switch, you can also lock this connection if you wish, there's no need for it to change. Again, as with the switch, simply right-click on the destination and choose Lock Connection. Also, as we did with the switch, you can verify that the software is configured correctly by looking on the Logic tab for the configured blade. Now, if you look at the columnated page in the input column for pin 3, you will see a gray-colored virtual LED. If the software is configured correctly, this gray LED will illuminate blue when you create a closure between pin 3 and the ground pin on the Logic connector, pin 1. If the Surface Programmable button Program 3 in the Surface GUI is configured correctly, the LED on the switch will illuminate from that same closure between pin 1 and pin 3 of the Blade Logic connector. Congratulations! You now know how to configure the Control Surface Programmable buttons and their associated LEDs.